by January 28th, we'll be witnessing transition mm. in the United States of America. An election mm. has been conducted despite different issues concerning the election power will be transited. But in the Gabbian election was held in the opening monologue that which we presented December 1st, 2016. Now, the incumbent president that came to power mm -hmm. by force, by force mm. transited from yeah. a military leader mm. to a civilian mm. president, mm. organized an election, contested the election, appointed the electoral committee, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. contested the election, lost the election mm. wonderfully, and then initially said he was... So we hand over power, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden he changed his mind. Not, that is, yeah. is not handing over, is not handing over power. I think um, in the interest of peace, in the interest of that nation, in the interest of black race, we appeal to Yaya Jame. Having spent 22 years mm. in power, mm. I think he should go to retirement and enjoy his old age. But then leave. again, JJ, mm -hmm. looking at it, Billy, like you just said in your opening, uh, is, if it's something about us Africans as in our leaders, you know, we, we are aware of what's happening with um, um, Robert Mugabe. Yes. <laughs> you know, and now... Um, um, Quite but, laughable. <laughs> It is really funny. Now, it is the Gambia that is making um, headlines, you know, in Africa. But then again, haven't um, led, you know, a country that small for 22 years? I mean, what reasons could he have not to want to hand over in knowing that uh, he started with force, eventually he became a civilian president? I mean, what could there be reasons? I mean, the reasons are behind that. I'm sure probably his past is on him. Mm. And then um, the... Uh, the candidate that won the election has said that, you know what, what they are going to do is to have reconciliation. That Mabaro won the election based mm -hmm. on the result that was there, that they are going to have reconciliation. You know, when someone ruled for 22 years mm -hmm. under an authoritative, despotic um, administration, mm -hmm. definitely there will be a lot of baggages of the past. Of he's, yeah. he's scared of what of is course. in the wardrobe. Mm -hmm. But I think that what the ECOWAS leaders should do to assure him mm -hmm. and to tell the President-elect, that you know what? Let's forget about the past. Let's reconcile the nation. Let's put the past behind us and move forward. Mm -hmm. I think it's the issue of what happens when he leaves office. What happens what to will him? What will happen to him after? I think that's his fear. Yes. Okay. It's the fear of yeah. the unknown. The fear of what I have done in the past. Will it come to haunt me, me in the future? If I let go and of And I think that okay. we, if there are assurances to him that you know what? You won't be proved. Your administration, you will be tried. Just exit power. And I think that is the approach we need to adopt first and foremost in Africa. Mm. To ask all those that have sit tight on power to exit first. Let them exit and leave the state <laughs> other than to hold on to power. Mm. And we say that because of the fear of proving them or asking them to answer to some certain misdeed they do while they are in office. While I understand uh, deeply what you're trying to explain, but then if we allow that to be the norm for every African leader who has stayed on to power for years on end. We're going to have a situation where people do not um, become answerable, or I don't know if that's the right word to use, you know, to whatever crimes they might have committed, all because they have the power to do so. If you can you can understand that, what I mean? If, I am, if you can use that to get rid of Mugabe, mm -hmm. if you can use that to get rid of Mugabe in Zimbabwe, if you can use that to get rid of Museveni in Uganda, mm -hmm. if you can use that... And maybe Jame as well in this case. Jame yeah. in, in, in Gambia. Mm -hmm. Are you getting my point? If you can not use that to get rid of despot in order to move forward, mm -hmm. are you getting my point? Why can't you adopt the approach? The approach which you have now for them to answer. In actual sense, let me put it across to you. How many past leaders in Africa have, have actually answered questions? Mm -hmm. Give me an example. Mm -hmm. With the exception of what Rollins did in Ghana. Mm -hmm. With the exception of what Rollins did in Ghana, give me an example. Is he in Liberia? Is he, if not for the intervention of the World Court, uh, um, Hoshni um, for Liberia, mm -hmm. this president of Liberia, what's his name again? I remember his mm -hmm. name. Johnson. No, no, it's no, not no, Johnson. Johnson. The one that was arrested in Nigeria. Charles Taylor. Charles Taylor. Taylor. Charles Taylor. Mm -hmm. not, if not for the World Court, mm -hmm. internally, there has never been any internal measure. To address, check. In, in, give me an example in Africa. That's but, the but then, isn't that yeah. a problem mm -hmm. on its own? Because uh, if they are looking for soft landing right now, that means they could actually go into power, commit all sorts of atrocities, and then you know, exit no, without so any. Because because what we are things. saying is that we have found ourselves in a mess. What's mm -hmm. the way out? Okay. Now we are talking about the ID situation that everybody should answer, and I've told it to you that which African leader have actually answered for his misdeed? Mm -hmm. oh. Give me an example. 
from 1960 to date, with the exception of Ghana. In my little knowledge, I might not be knowledgeable about everything, but in my own little knowledge, I've not seen any nation, with the exception of Ghana, where Rollins Romani arrested all these leaders and what have you. And the one of Liberia, it was an international body. Yeah. Internally, mm -hmm. in Africa, there's never been any internal mechanism to address the misdeed of the misdeed past. Of, mm. Now, if there's a way we could use to get rid of Germany, because it has become an embarrassment, mm. an embarrassment to you and I in this globalized world that I'm an African, mm. and in African, uh, sitatism is associated with leadership. When in Britain, there was a transition. When in US, there was a transition. When in France, there will be a transition come May, June this year. So why should Africa be an exception? And I think it is that assurance they will give to Germany. Mm -hmm. Give him the assurance, let him leave power. And then you start to put in process. And I think that ECOWAS as a body, African Union as a body, they need to come up with a mechanism that we address some of this issue. I'll quickly draw your attention to, you know we had a problem in Sao Tome and Principe. Mm -hmm. There was a time there was a coup mm -hmm. when Obasanjo was a yes. president. Yes. And the coup was planned. And Obasanjo had to practically go to mm -hmm. Sao Tome and mm -hmm. Principe for the government to be restored. The, there was a negotiation with the coup cool porter. Mm -hmm. Where the coup cool porter tried, they were not tried. No. They were not tried. Mm -hmm. Now that was, that, was a, that was a measure. If people had come for the trial of the coup cool porter, do you think that we still have democracy in Sao Tome and Principe? Now, ECOWAS leaders are meeting in Abuja. I think in that meeting, they need to talk to the the general of the army, the leader of the armed forces, that has pledged his support. His support for Jammer. To, to, to Jammer. He's an appointee of Yes, I, I was going to come to that. And also, you know, the, the strong worded statements, you know, um, being issued out from uh, the quarters of Jammer himself, you know, to the point where he views the intervention of ECOWAS, uh, deployment of troops, you know, as a declaration of war. <laughs> you know, when one person stands up and expects war for mm -hmm. a nation, that for me is a political crime, uh, if you mm -hmm. ask me, you know. So, um, do you think, first of all, the approach of the ECOWAS, you know, is, is correct in this case, to the point where troops have already been deployed in expectation for January 19 handover? Uh, for me, I, mm -hmm. I think that, um, first and foremost, let us explore the diplomatic means. Okay. War does not leave good consequences. Mm -hmm. The consequences of war, has long range implication. Now, it affects the most vulnerable part of the population, mm. women and children, and there will be loss of lives and property. Definitely. Mm. I think we should explore diplomatic means. What are diplomatic means? First and foremost, we need to get across, first and foremost, to the army general, to mm -hmm. win the support. You know, Jame is a drowning man, and a drowning man clings to everything. Mm. He's in a desperate situation. Mm. So a, a drowning man, comes with threats with all manners of things so we shouldn't go the way it's going yeah. we go through that now the courts will be meeting this month the supreme court in gambia mm -hmm. will be meeting to talk about the election result mm -hmm. now we need to get the elements in the court is there a way ECOWAS could get across the elements in the court that that's another option three sanctions should be imposed all of these people the army general yaya Jame himself and the rest of it, we could impose sanction, every sanction, every sanctioned body on him that will force him to retire. Just like what America is planning to do with Russia. Okay. To sanctions were imposed by Obama concerning the arcing of the election. So let us explore diplomatic means first before we look at the military option. If the man does not leave by January 19 and other, those means have been exhausted, ECOWAS should deploy to man. Okay. And, and, and get rid of and get get rid of of the man. Mm. Besides, we could even get that done but, through intelligence by yeah. infiltrating. Yes, but, by infiltrating okay. the but, then, but then, today, but then, today, if you look at it now, let's look at security of lives and property. Because from reports we hear, uh, the, the the head of the electoral body in Gambia has actually fled. Yeah, you know, because he said there's a, a threat of to us. his life. I mean, mm. if he could flee, I mean, what does he really tell to other people who are really opposing the, the incumbent president? Now, from from what she said, mm. radio stations, you are trying to stifle mm. the public expression of opinion um you you are putting up threats the military is trending fire and brimstone radio stations have been closed you will know that it's a state of anomaly mm -hmm. there's an anarchy going on now it's because the president is clinging to power mm -hmm. the power which he has lost and it's just a matter of time he will leave now 
if there's full scale deployment of troops mm. and there's war, and this is escal escalated to the to the point that there is an exchange of gunfire between the ECOWAS troop and troops loyal to the definitely there will be lots of lots of lives and property. Mm. And we are talking about this thing not ending in the next three, four, five, six, mm. six months, depending on on how mobilized and how determined ECOWAS is really interested in getting involved. Mm. Now, if you want to have a quick sweep clean stick, that will be heavy, that will be heavy mm. artillery. Yes. And that will lead to heavy losses every loss of, of lives, lives, yes. lives and mm. property. Mm. And but the damage will be will be will be will be catastrophic. But in overall, you get rid of this dictator that has been an embarrassment to Africa. Because every time you talk, it's Gambia, 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 mm. Gambia, Gambia. And it's it's pathetic that people will be in power and when it's time for them to exit exactly, they want yeah. to die power. And I don't I, I think that probably our leaders don't learn. They don't learn. They didn't learn from Samuel Do in Li in Liberia. Even the one in Libya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he, he didn't learn he didn't learn he didn't learn from 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 he didn't learn from this Ivorian president mm. uh, that Lawrence Lawrence Babu. Mm -hmm. You didn't learn from Babu. Are you getting my point? And you you didn't learn from Lawrence Babu. And if you even look at trends that is happening in Côte d'Ivoire, because let's talk about Africa in mm. diaspora. If you look at trends in Côte d'Ivoire concerning the unrest, concerning the army, it means that um, the present president did not learn from the mistakes of the, of, 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 of Bagu. He's yeah. making the mm. same mistake that Lawrence Bagu makes. So mm. I, 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 it, it's pathetic that every now and then when it comes to election, we have issues in, in, in Africa. And I think West Africa is getting it right. Gambia should not be an embarrassment. In Mali, they've gotten it right. In Ghana, they've gotten it right. In Nigeria, we've gotten it right. Coup d'Ivoire was resolved over time. Now, Gambia shouldn't be an embarrassment to the mm. West Coast. Mm. The, uh, we appeal to Yaya Jame, if he's watching us, to please leave for the sake of his children, for the sake of Gambians, who he claims he loves. If he loves the country more than himself, he should leave power. Mm. He should leave power. For the president elect, the people have decided. He lost the election. Hmm. He had less than forty percent of the vote cast. Hmm. His popularity has gone. So it's it's it's, it's, it's clear for I, me. I mean, the jubilation of the people, you know, over uh, well, uh, his opponent who won, you know, should, the mood of the people is what I'm trying to say. Should have even let him put the interests of yeah, because they actually the just country. wanted a true change yes. after 22 years. First, before he is. I, I think so. I mean, if the, the majority of people are saying finally we have a change, he mm -hmm. should have. But of course. But then, you know, I'm happy you are from the media. So let's talk about th that angle uh, a bit. You know, the attempt to actually stifle uh, the media <laughs> in, in all of this. First, let me ask you, does the president of a country even have the right to go as far as shutting down, you know, maybe a TV or a radio station well, because it is well, disseminating some kind of information that is not favorable to him? For, for does someone, he have that right? For some of us, that's why we are calling for an amendment even in that of Nigerian the enabling law that talks about the establishment of radio stations mm -hmm. and TV stations. Mm -hmm. And that respons the sole responsibility of granting the license should not be vested in the hands of the president. There should be a commission, a commission, an independent body mm -hmm. appointed over time to do this. Mm -hmm. That power shouldn't be vested in an individual. Mm -hmm. The power of right, the basic right that God gave to mankind is the right of expression and if you take that right you are denying man and in an, a right that can never be denied yeah under no circumstance mm -hmm. should you deny that right and you see over time over time globally there are attempts by the executive mm -hmm. to stifle public uh, public expression mm. by trying to control the media for instance if you have i used to tell people this why do you think like nations like even nations like um i read this book my vision by the ruler of um, dubai uh, mohammed bin maktoum and he mm. says something that there's one thing they never he never did in his nation is to stifle the press because if the press are saying something good about you mm. 
people will know. If they are saying something bad about you, it's just a matter of time. That oh. lies don't last forever. It is only the truth that lasts forever. Mm -hmm. And I think that everyone in leadership, why should I be scared as a president of trying to close down a radio station or a TV station for expressing a view that is contrary to my view or for spreading rumor? Let there be a body to deal with that, an independent body made up of professionals that knows what it means to practice and to operate mm. in the media industry. Mm. Let them regulate that. Let them enforce the discipline okay. on the body. Other than to close down mm. stations, to set military, to shut down the station, to shut down. You are trying to take away the right that God gave to man. Okay, um, Jude, let's look at um, ECOWAS now, uh, its roles um, so far in the South region, okay? Because you mentioned uh, what they have done in Mali and all that. Looking at their antecedents and um, comparing what we have on ground in, uh, uh, in the Gambia, do you see them you know, doing this uh, stuff? You know? yeah, yeah, basically, if you look at the commitment, because we are talking about uh, since December, the um, President Mohamed Bari um, and the leadership of um, ECHO was led by Johnson Salif. 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 Um, mm. By Johnson Salif, um, they made concerted effort. Mm. You know, they visited uh, Yaya Jame in the Gambia. They gave him sessions and different top levels of meeting. One is taking place in Abuja today in order to to resolve this diplomatically. They've taken this issue head on, and I want to appeal to the president of Nigeria to assume a statement rule to assume the leadership position of this resolving this in Bogu because whatever is achieved concerning this will be a plus for Nigeria as a nation because we are seen in whatever form as as the most populous black nation mm. in the world we are seen as the leadership icon the mm. leadership face of Africa mm. and I think that Nigeria should see this if we should see this as an insult on the black race and it's an, an insult on what we stand for which is democracy and we should ensure that we play prominent leadership of starting from today's meeting to ensure that this man leaves this office because okay. an embarrassment to okay. you and i all to right we'll come back and talk about all right, welcome back. It's uh, still Galaxy today. If you've just joined us, we're looking at the Gambia power tussle, all of the issues uh, playing out in that small country. Uh, we still have uh, G.D. Uh, Johnson. He's the Deputy Provost, Nigeria Institute of Journalists with us in the house. All right. Okay, uh, Mr. G.D. Johnson, let's, let's uh, look at the true face of democracy, you know, in all of this. Um, for a nation that assures you know us that it is in a democratic you know state or dispensation and then you have a leader who stays or holds on to power for as long as over two decades you know <laughs> and still wanting to go on you know despite uh, calls from the people that they want to change and all of that for, it calls to mind the question, you know, where the democracy really is in, in all of this. And you, so you find out that this is what actually plays out in most African countries. So really, what is the true face of democracy? On the flip side, year? first and foremost, we need to co even commend Jaya Jame hmm. for conducting the election. <laughs> in the first on, place. On the well, flip side, on the first, in the first, the first place. place organizing mm -hmm. a multi-party, um, you know, we have had a situation whereby it will, it will only be the only candidate, sole candidate, but... In the last election, you know, we had other parties contesting the mm -hmm. team. We should commend them for, for, for conducting that. that on the flip side. However, um, for us to move forward, for development to take place in Africa, we must, as a matter of fact, embrace democracy. Hmm. Democracy requires party system, a functional party system, an independent judiciary, a vibrant and independent electoral, a fearless, you know the name, a fearless electoral commission. Mm -hmm. Because in the Gambia, we saw a situation whereby the electoral commission was appointed by the sitting president, and the electoral commission went about doing its job without fear or fear to announce the result despite series of attempts yes. to manipulate the process. Mm. Mm. So for democracy to take place, all of these elements, and also you need a bipartisan press, a bipartisan, mm. because naturally, the media tends to take the position of the opposition. Mm. Because alternatively, as the watchdog 
of the society, usually, usually the media aligns with the opposition in terms of thinking, in terms of approach. But we need a bipartisan press. A bipartisan press in the sense that that sees view from both from both sides mm. uh, for democracy to thrive. All of that we have always limited democracy to election. Election is just a component part of democracy. Mm -hmm. For instance, every one of us we are looking forward to 2019 in Nigeria. Let yes. me be, let's for that let's election. To, to, it's yes. the election we are looking forward to. Exactly. But democracy is not much the process more than the election. itself. Mm -hmm. I get my point. The electoral process is just a component part of the of of, of, of of democracy. For instance, bringing it back home, what is the constitution of the Supreme Court? What will be the laws that will guide the elections in 2019? What is the constitution of INEC electoral commissions? What is the issue with delineation of constituency? By law, you know we ought to have had we ought to have had um, censor in 2016 in mm -hmm. Nigeria. 20, censor in 2016 because the last one we had was in 2006. 2000, yes. And mm -hmm. by law, it's every 10, 10, 10 years. years. Of course. I, 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 every 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 10, 10, 10, 10 years. Yes. So all of these processes you need to put in place for democracy too. Because democracy is the government of representation. Mm -hmm. Representation whereby people have their choose freely choose their representative. Where there is a lack of representation, then there's no democracy in place. But we tend to limit democracy so to election. election. Okay, but then Jide, uh, let's just try and localize this now to our country. You just talked about democracy and most people limiting it to elections. But right now, I mean if you are in power, it's because you are popular. I mean, if you win election. So for a place where you conducted an election, although we don't really know his intent for conducting an election in the first place, for uh, looking at the fact that he is no longer popular with the people, and yet he's still insisting on staying in that country, I mean, what does it really pretend? I mean, you're trying to leave people who don't want you. Let's try and bring it down to Nigeria here. When you've done something wrong and you're no longer popular to hold a particular office, yet you don't want to mm. step down. Yeah, it's, it's, you see, it's the African thing. Look, it's, you go to boards of power starters, mm. you go to agencies of government, you go to institution, you go to different organizations, you see whereby people manipulate the process to stay in power. Staying in power perpetual is an African thing. Mm. It's, it's, it's inherent in Africa to want to. I'll give you a flip side, which many people didn't look at. Obama said something, and it, it got me thinking that he could have won a third term mm. if he had contested the election. That he would have won a third term because he's still popular. When he said it, I said, this African thinking operating an American president. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Many people didn't look at it that way. But that was the angle which I looked. He said, because you don't see anybody, have you ever seen an American president saying that I will have won the third time if I've contested the election after? He's, he's staying in power. City is an African thing. We, you know the traditional thing? A king rules forever. A mm. king, you know. Yes. A king rules forever. Yes. He, he lives until the throne death. Until he dies. <laughs> Are you kidding? Or there is a there is a popular uprising. Or there is a revolt. There is an internal revolt. Are you with me? Uh, uh, and that revolt starts when the elites, when the elites are not comfortable with the power structure. Mm. When the elites are not comfortable with the power structure. When the elites are still comfortable, the king will be there. He will satisfy the elites. So. For me, the challenges we have is for us to get rid of this mentality of sectarianism. Is that where you go to churches, you go to mocks, you, you've not seen where people are fighting over chief of imam, chief imam of a particular mocks, and they will start killing one another. Mm -hmm. Or you see people fighting over general of Asia of one church or the other. So it's, it's, it's where you see people in other climb transiting power to one another. They have a transition process in place. In Africa, we don't have. Mm. We don't have. How many Africans do even write their wills? Are you getting my point? How many do write their will? Mm. Their will. You know, your will is your transition. Mm -hmm. Transition to glory. When you leave, what happens after you leave? That's why you see people fighting over that. So I think it's an African thing. And for us to get it right from a democratic point of view, we need a vibrant press. We need an independent judiciary made of men of integrity. Mm. You need a fearless 
electoral system, you need an enlightened public. Mm. For instance, nobody needs to tell the people in Gambia to vote. I voted. If majority of Gambians are taken to the street to protest against the unpopular government, I'm sure the man will be forced to 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 to, to leave. Power. You know what happened in 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 Burkina Faso mm. with Bless Compare. Mm. You know the same scenario happened too. Mm. Bless Compare um, carried out a coup in which he killed one of the most finest son of Africa um, in person of. Um, I remember his name now, uh, Thomas Sankara. You know, he came to power. You know, Thomas Sankara came to Nigeria for a coerced meeting. Mm -hmm. Then he returned back. It was, it was told that there's a coup taking place in Burkina Faso, and then uh, organized by his friend. It's his friend. They won't be cool. So he was killed. Now, to, bless Compare was forced to resign after staying in power for more than thirty something years. There was an uprising in Burkina Faso that forced him to okay. leave. And I think that we Africans, we need to embrace the need to fight for our rights, mm. to make a demand for it. You can't suffer in silence. You need, if I vote, I believe in that vote because the vote is your mandate. Now, if you break the word mandate into two, it's the word man and date. It's your date with destiny. That means that you have rendered your life, the authority of for your that, life, to for someone that, else to yes. take charge of mm. you. Because if you want to sign your money in the bank, one, is it that you use your signature? Or your thumbprint. Yes. In actual sense, your signature can be forged. Your thumbprint can and never be forged. Mm. And when you go to vote, you use your thumbprint. thumbprint. That you know what? For the next four years, my right to take decision concerning this nation will be taken on my behalf by this person. So this person is acting in trust for me. And that's why, if you put your life on the line by voting, you should be ready to put your life on the line by protesting. Mm. Mm. Wow, that, that's really deep. Well, I, I think a lot of us, I use the word us, me inclusive, <laughs> don't actually look at these issues as deeply as you have made us understand. You know, we just like go to the polls, elect whoever wants to elect and just leave every other thing to mm -hmm. whatever the government decides and all of that. I think that there needs to be like a reorientation. Exactly. You need an engineering like, Yes, like, like you said, because actually everything depends on how far the voters are ready, you know, to, to go. go. But then, let's see, let's look at the two sides, you know, what could play out in all of this. One, we could have a peaceful, uh, a, a peaceful, uh, well, deliberations mm -hmm. by uh, the, the leaders, the African leaders are coming together and maybe have Jame, you know, concede defeat at the end of the day and actually step down come the 19th of January. But on the other hand, if it plays out the other way, we could uh, end up um, having to remove him from office by use of force. You know, <laughs> we, so uh, let's look at the implications. Let's look at the implications, really, you know, on that little nation of the Gambia. As little as it is, it does have a lot of power is it within, that yes, happen? yes, in the African uh, One of the most world, world nations. Yes, so let's look at what the implications will be, however, it well, does play out. Uh, I think that. Um, we hope that common sense will prevail. Mm -hmm. We hope that integrity will prevail. Mm -hmm. And we appeal to Yaya Jame to do the honorable thing by peacefully yes. leaving power. Mm -hmm. Because he will make peaceful change inevitable, make violent change inevitable. Mm -hmm. Now, whichever way it goes, Jame will leave. It's just a matter of time. If he leaves, by January 19, he becomes an honorable person with his integrity and everything intact. If he does not leave by January 19, it's just a matter of time. He will leave this year because ECOWAS must be resolute. African must be determined. And the United Nations must also play a role in the sense that if we practice democracy, and democracy says that whoever has the highest vote that is popular, Mm. should be in power, I think we should all stand by it. Mm. If it's the use of force to get rid of the man. If the first scenario does not play out, I, I, I'll commend I, I'll employ ECOWAS to, 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 to use force. But to then use again, force and probably we get a UN resolution. Mm. But because the, UN must but, be. But then if the use of force now, if um, other, um, other aspects um, didn't work, I mean, what are the consequences it will have on the people of the Gambia? Uh, you see, whether we like it or not, 
you have to pay the price. Someone said the tree of liberty is watered by the blood of the patriot. Mm. Are you getting my point? Um, I'm a Christian by faith. I'm not a religious by God. The life I'm living is a broad life. Someone had to die for me to live. But you know the interesting thing in Africa, we don't want to die. Every freedom that we enjoy, some people die. For our independence, some people yeah. made sacrifices. For our independence, some people made sacrifices. The democracy we are even enjoying today. Some people were in, um, they were in Nadeko and the rest of it. Even the people that were in Nadeko, they are not even the ones enjoying the gains of democracy. You know, the people that fought the military, that fought Babangida out of power, mm. they are not even the ones benefiting from it. So exactly. some people made the ultimate, the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. Until we are ready to pay the sacrifice, we are not ready to move forward. And in Africa, we train to live in comfort zone. You know what? We feel that it does not concern me. It's just a matter of time. It concerns everybody. Whatever affects your neighbor affects you and I. So we must be ready to make a demand at whatever level to pay the sacrifice. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. I think we need to change um, our topic of discussion at this point. Uh, we've been discussing 